because I simply, well, 1.5 times speed because I, I can't be asked to watch the whole 20 minutes. So, buckle up, let's fucking, let's listen to this shit. So welcome to the stage, Kim Blair. Hello, I'm Kim Blair. In my circles, I'm largely considered, I think, a, a relatively nice person. These are my dogs, Sage and Flaky. These are my cats, Tag and the Grey Boy. Um, I really enjoy Lego. Uh, I, I collect skulls and taxidermy. And I also really like playing a lot of video games, uh, including Elden Ring. By day, uh, I am the crazed CEO of Sweet Baby Inc., the DEI-obsessed censorship mafia who is currently ruining and wokeifying all of the video games that you've ever played. I mean... I would say that's a little bit over-exaggerated, obviously, but this is a clear, like, hey, look, I'm a nice person, here are all these things that I do that are relatable. And then here's how the internet's painted me. Maybe you might want to have a look at why that is, beyond just being like, oh, um, they just hate me because I'm black or whatever. Like, come on. Thank you. Thank you, it's hard work. Um, if you haven't heard of Sweet Baby Ink, Thank you. Uh, that's, that's actually how I prefer it. Um, but if you have, it's either because of the over 80 amazing and often award-winning games that we've worked on, or actually one of those, Usual June, was at this very conference. So yeah, you've, you've either heard us from all of these wonderful games or... Uh, I wonder whether she's going to mention the fact that essentially one of the major games that they've worked on is, uh, you know, Spider-Man 2, which was very controversial. And of course, of fucking course, Alan Wake 2, which got a lot of backlash. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Suicide Squad, which everyone hated. So, you know, hey, award-winning games. Yeah, sure, love. Of the over 80 amazing and often award-winning games that we've worked on, or actually one of those, Usual June, was at this very conference. So, yeah, you've, you've either heard of us from all of these wonderful games, or perhaps you're familiar with the nearly year-long hate campaign that has been waged against us as a team. It's not a hate campaign, love. People are criticizing you because of the things that you have said and done. Like, okay, yes, I'm sure some of these, if we go, go back and have a look at these, like, let's learn, have a little fucking... Wonderful games, or perhaps... Like, some of these people are, are fucking stupid. I mean, oh, gee, like, look at, look at, look, these are all very clickbait -y. I agree with you. Like, oh, fuck, what have I done? Uh, these are all very, like... But, like, look at this. Report the fuck out of this group. That's what one of your employees tried to get someone, like, just removed from the internet. <laughs> Maybe you might want to have a little... Look at this. This guy here, Chris Kindred worked for your company. Fuck you know. Perhaps you're familiar with the nearly year-long hate campaign that has been waged against us as a team. Unfortunately, today I'm here to talk about that in a talk I'm going to call What oh, Happens When You Get go. Harassed? A oh, shut up. I'm, I, I'm so tired of this what happens when you get harassed. Like, like, criticism is not harassment, love. Maybe, you know, actually engage in the feedback that you're getting. <laughs> like, I sh there's there's absolutely like some asshole who's like, I hope your family gets uh, COVID and uh, you get AIDS and then you swivel up and die. <laughs> like, yeah, of course that's happening. Of course it fucking is. It's the internet. But like, it, it, come on, you you went out on stage and described white men as picky babies. I mean, jeez. Imagine I did something like that. Like, I, I'd be done. I'd be fucking done. But because, because of reasons, mostly politics, uh, it, it, you're allowed to just get away with being racist? And you seriously don't see what the fucking problem is? Oh, this is such nonsense. Anyway. Sweet baby story. So I'm going to start at the beginning. Who is Sweet Baby Inc.? Um, we are a narrative development company and we are a team of narrative developers. Uh, what that means is that we do script writing, storytelling, narrative work for video games and- Oh, you ha oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You, she's replaced sensitivity reading with cultural authenticity. Now, for anyone who isn't, doesn't have their brain plugged into the anti-1984 <laughs> machine. <laughs> I sound like such a conspiracy theorist. But, um... Sensitivity reading is essentially where someone comes on and says like, oh, that thing you've written, that might offend someone. Maybe change that. It's like, just like, f just fuck off. Let people write and make what they want to make, for God's sake. Life is short. We're going to be six feet under one day. Just let, let a G make the game he wants to make. Okay? And if, if people don't like it, then have to fucking play it. Like, we're not forcing people to play these games. I haven't played any of the games that this company have been involved in because I value good stuff and they don't make good stuff <laughs> I, th I think it's telling as well while i'm doing this video that it's like it's like raining really hard outside my room fucking classic uk weather that is anyhow let, let's get let's continue 
Sometimes that means that we come in for writing punch-ups. Sometimes that means we're the entire writer's room for a project. Sometimes that means we're coming in. Yeah, you were the entire writer's room project for Suicide Squad and it was trash. <laughs> very, very early on in helping them start the groundwork, the world building. Um, but what I want to really stress is that all of our work focuses very heavily and very seriously on story. That is what narrative development is. Yes, and that's fine and all, but the problem is, is that you have made it a point in your companies and in all of your speeches about the very obvious political angle that you have when it comes to your stories, and that's fine. Like, I, I don't fucking care. You want to make a game that's political, I don't give a shit, but people are tired, man. Like, I'm... I, I'm so fucking tired of politics in games, and before the, the fucking Twitter ads come in here and be like, Ew, and, uh, yeah, but you like Fallout, Fallout is anti-capitalist, you punk, America, come here, blah, 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 blah. Yes, I know, and it's also fucking good. Most of the games that Sweet Baby have worked on, I mean, some of them I'm sure are good, but, like, the, like, they, they make it a point of contention and it's not just that like and uh, I'll, I'll say that for a moment but some of the games they've worked on are good I'm sure but most of the games they've worked on are not good and the stories are trash so people are just reacting to what they fucking see anyway um, we started out in 2018 but it was really in 2020 that we kind of came to any kind of uh, industry prominence and it was on a backdrop of the COVID quarantine sending everybody home from the office um, yeah, yeah, neat no tests no promising but within I'd love no to give you a portfolio review and a little bit of a portfolio review Right, they assume the problem are a myriad problem if you're someone who's already in the industry and you talked a lot about advocacy, we talked a lot about helping people get into the industry, and we also talked a lot about the importance of telling stories from a you know a variety of perspectives, and especially of having those writers and those creators in the room to help you with that. And see that's fine, but the problem is is that your company, and this is a big thing that I think a lot of people have noticed, people are very good at pattern recognition. Your company employs people of diverse backgrounds, but they don't have any diversity of thought. <laughs> like Pretty much everyone who works at SBI all think exactly the same fucking way. They all espouse the same, like, view of story. They all have exactly the same, like, political views. <laughs> it's like, there, there is no diversity of thought. And that is, like, a pretty big problem now. Because actually diverse stories come from, you know, Brian Johnson and Billy Bighead um, writing a story with with Katie Large Nose and they make a story and then that story is about some bloke who lives in like a slum or whatever and then the, he gets like a, a, a laser sword and then Jane what's her name comes in and is like hey but in a slum they do drugs and I've been in the slum I know so then he, he does drugs that give him a magic sword or something I don't fucking know just like but your company doesn't have that because you're all privileged <laughs> fucking privileged upper-class twats who like talk down to people and hold racist views <laughs> like and you also espouse very political viewpoints which people are just sick and tired of as we joined new conversations, we worked on more projects, uh, more people joined our team. And so in that year or in those, those subsequent years, we grew from a team of only five to a team. Oh, yes. And within this team, there is, I don't know if I can identify any of them, but like, I'm pretty sure every single person on this team has exactly the same views. I, I, I know that's going to be a bit rude to say, but like, was it Chris Kindred or something? One of these two? I, I'm not really too sure because the art style is so basic. They all look exactly the same. Like, they all look exactly the fucking same. But pretty much most of this team all espouse the same political views. So there's no diversity of thought. Team of 16 incredibly talented people. And tell the years yeah. again, we were, came on and did spot checks. I had wanted to. We were becoming true narrative developers, capable of taking on pretty much any task as, as far as a touch story on any project at any time. And we're not familiar with it, any projects in a matter of months. You don't learn necessarily like, oh, here, you're good at it. You get really rough. Uh, I learned a lot about Carrie Fisher, and beyond her acting career, she was actually a very respected uh, script doctor in Hollywood. Someone who just for her be known by. I have wanted to be known by game devs and writers, especially. I I want. I want. I want. I want. I want. I <laughs> want. Me 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 me. I don't know what the well. I I can I can make some. Uh, I guess you could say. Uh, what's the fucking term? Inclinations. I can make some insights about this person based on how she speaks in all of her speeches, but I've noticed that people like this, they always go on about what they want. And, and look, like story, you make stories that you would like to see, and I think that's fine, 
But I've noticed with people like this, they constantly say, I want to do this, and 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 people don't like that, that's because they're this, 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 and this. It's like, the fucking narcissism is so insufferable, and, and like, yeah, I'll, I'll save it for a Teams and studios and, and, and writers and, and creatives to think of us when they need a hand, when they, when they want that more support. I want to be a game dev's game dev, and that's where I hoped it would be, but that is not what happened. Well, of course it is not what happened, because your company is political as fuck, you're political as fuck, and we now live in a time where politics is absolutely everywhere, even in things where it fucking shouldn't be. Like, I... Get, it, it wouldn't be your company... Your company is just, like, the catalyst for all this shit, but, like, there are other games companies out there as well. The reason why people are so pissed off at this is not because they're racist or sexist or whatever. I mean, yeah, okay, there's definitely people within them who are, obviously. The real reason is because people are just sick and tired of politics being in absolutely everything. Like, video, video games nowadays have become so political. And it's absolutely fucking exhausting. Like, there, there was a re re review of the PlayStation 5 by one of these fucking Kotaku journalists where he just starts talking about the Trump presidency. I'm like, I don't care. I want to read about a PlayStation. And, you know, it's like, oh, if you don't like this game, that means you're a misogynist. Or if, or if you buy Hogwarts Legacy, you're supporting genocide or some nonsense. Like, fuck. People just want to be left alone to play video games. How fucking hard is that to do? Yes, you can make political art. Yes, you can make diverse art. All that is great, but you you gotta leave. You got you gotta stop being so obnoxious and so grandiose. It's ah, oh, it's so annoying. And all you're doing is making people hate you, and that's what's fucking happening. And if you're doing things like this, it's like, how about you engage with what people are actually saying? Some of it's stupid. Most of it's stupid. But people like myself who. You know, I don't have a... I'm not going to go into politics in this video, but I, I, I'll i just say that, like, I've always kind of held a very outsider perspective. I'm just like, look, I, I don't fucking care. I just want to play good video games, but I don't want to support... I, I don't support companies. I don't support EA. I don't support um, Ubisoft because they're shitty companies. They have shitty practices. You're the same. Your company and you do things which are morally questionable... I mean, fuck, you, you went out on stage and you described, you described, you know, you described white men as picky babies. And you said you cater to white men like that. And that's why your company is called Sweet Baby. Can you not stop for a damn minute and think how obscenely racist that is? Like, imagine I went out on stage and I said, like, I, I, well, I'm not, I can't think of anything, but just, you know, replace the wording, and suddenly it's really racist. It's just, it's just so fucking wrong. It's so disgusting. I just, I don't even know what to say. I wonder how, I'm gonna keep going, but I, I, the, this, listening to this person talk just pisses me off, because, yeah. So I'll, I'll see how much longer my, my uh, patience can take this before I just shut this off. But, uh, yeah. Because in October of 2023, we had about 70 games under our belt at the time, but two of them, two very, very big ones, were about to drop within a week of each other. So on October 23rd, there was Spider-Man 2, and then on October 27th, there was Alan Wake 2, both big AAA games, and we had worked on narrative and character for both of them with literally years of work on, on Spider-Man 2, and we would finally get to announce them. We were very excited. Uh, in retrospect, we were actually like comically excited because we had a couple thousand followers at the time, mostly game devs, and we were like, okay, it's time to stand up and be proud of our work. Wow. This is gonna be really nice. And I remember even thinking that morning as we made these posts, like, I wonder if anyone's gonna notice that like we posted about Spider-Man, we're also posting about Alan Wake. Like, will anyone put it together? Because I think our way of working at Sweet Baby, the kind of like teamwork that we do on so many different games is really, really unique. I think it's really cool. I think people will be excited about it and about our craft. So I decided to do a cheeky Google and see like, hey, can uh. anyone uh, put that together? Uh, the Google went bad. I, I shouldn't have done it because um, yeah. rather than you know any praise or people going, wow, how did you do it? Or just, hey, a narrative development company, what does that mean? I'm really interested. We there's a funny blah, element to blah, it where blah, I go, blah, like, blah, 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 people were kind blah. of talking like, Oh, yeah, these are all, like, just, yeah, yeah blah, 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 this is the, <laughs> our website, this, this is since 2019. Yeah, well, we, we, literally within a few If you ever thought every game feels like it was written by exactly the same people, that's because they are. I mean, are any, are any of this, is any of this necessarily wrong? I mean, like, your games are just, you, you have people in your games who have exactly the same political views, and they say exactly the same thing. 
people called when this when this controversy happened that the response was going to be oh you're just racist or oh you're just sexist and they were fucking right it's like come on try and maybe just think of things from an external perspective for once it's just so boring i'm just gonna fast forward through this because I, I just <laughs> yeah, look at all these fucking they were finding photos of us, um, sometimes our families or our contractors, they were doxing me and other members of the team. Uh, yeah, none of these people in these videos doxed you, because if any one of these YouTubers had doxed any single one of these people, they would be off the platform like that. Doxing is, is very, very uh, serious, and you can't go, you can't, you, you can't go throwing accusations of doxing to some of these YouTube channels. I mean, bloody hell, like, Asmongold, Asmongold has just recently had to fucking go on a hiatus because he said like well he hasn't gone on a hiatus but he didn't have to but he went on a hiatus after he said some uh heated things about you know whatever and it it's it's like shit this this video is so sinister because she's masking what a lot of these people are actually criticizing first of all this video is likely criticizing her speech she gave this one i know for a fact is 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 like some of these are are, are criticizing actions that your company has done specifically like uh, like this one was criticizing when they tried to get that account banned this one is trying to criticize when they had whatever I, i've seen some of these videos not all of them obviously because i, I can't be fucking bothered and also they're clickbaity as shit but it, this narrative is like oh i'm just a games developer i'm a narrative designer and i got harassed online because people don't like diversity it's not that mate it's the fact that you're an extremely toxic and racist person and your company I, I t one of your employees tried to get someone banned. It's, uh, it's uh, this is what I mean when I say I can't stand these people because they will just gaslight and shame and, and and they'll get an audience for it, and people will listen to them, and people will believe the gaslighting, and they will believe what they heard, and those people are all in the industry, and it's just, <sighs> yeah. Uh, can I be honest here? I, I really don't want to continue because I know exactly what she's gonna say She's gonna say like, you know, she's gonna use start using political things. She's gonna start saying Oh, um, it's the extreme right or it's the extreme blah 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 or it's the political this or da 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 or whatever uh, And like look, she said, we are storytellers. It's like well, yeah, but you're also activists and you make it very clear what your political beliefs are I just I I just I, I gotta be honest like I I really hate these people and I know that's very hard for me to say because I don't I don't like to hate anyone um, or anything unless it's the last gen I fuck that movie but um, uh, I hate these people and I, I know that's pretty brutal to say but like I just they 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 will make corrupt narratives and they will just say this they, they will say this racist jargon they'll do things of incredibly morally questionable and then they will turn right around and say look at how how hard we have it whilst like you know I know, I know people who are writers who are trying to make it independently and they can't even and they work their asses off and they can't get hired at all I know people like that and then over here in bloody America and in Canada we have consultation groups that are doing uh, absolutely making trash games and, and not adding anything of value and they're getting like six figure sums and working with every single major company because of political reasons basically it's it's so shit and it's so disgusting and that's why I'm I just I don't have enough energy to even I don't even make jokes I just I genuinely like yeah I don't know what to say um the one thing i will say uh and this is a serious note though um is i don't endorse any of the harassment or racism or most of the views that the people who are anti sbi have uh said i don't i don't endorse them i think that they are very uh <clears throat> wrong i guess you could say and i do think that people like you know these people should be left alone like they should be allowed to do what they do but we should also be allowed to criticize them we should be allowed to not want to buy their games i think that's perfectly fair you know either all of it is okay or none of it is okay 
and uh, I, I think that if people don't want to play a game that has been made by EA, or play a game that's been made by Sweet Baby, or play a game that has been made by Microsoft, or whatever, you know, then you, it's perfectly within your right to do that. People can choose and do as they will. Uh, I think people need to just calm down and chill out, and I think, you know, these people need to just, they need to, they need to smoke some grass and just chill out and realize that they're in an incredibly privileged position, far more so than most of the people who are criticizing them, given that this <laughs> that this was at a festival. This person probably got paid like 10 grand to give this speech. I mean, bloody hell. <sighs> yeah, um, yeah, but this is just so wrong on so many levels. And I, I really genuinely hope that these people realize that they are not the good guys they have that